everybody, welcome to this episode of Red Wine Talks. I am here with YouTuber friend of mine, Elena. Hello. Ta Taber. I don't Taber. even know how to say your last name. Taber. People get tripped up on both of them. Isn't it kind of funny how, sorry, I'm like already diving in, but isn't it, kind of, <laughs> isn't it kind of funny how when you meet people online, like almost last names are irrelevant. It's true. Because also so many people have like their own moniker, or their like whatever their username is. Like Jenny's, like so many people are like, oh, it's where I live. I'm like, I don't even know, know her really. last name. Wellborn, but I only know X. Yeah, <laughs> it's like secret information. <laughs> don't expose her. I'm like, yeah. Um, hello, so, hello. Yes, here hello. we are. Um, this is risky. We're really living on the edge, or I'm living on the edge with this uh, white blouse. So. And typically, that's me. I like to do a little white on white moments. I, know. Um, I got my foam pants. Yeah, these are nice. Also white. So we'll just keep the wine over here. Um, no. We did film a little bit and then I realized that the camera was not on. It happens. But she was trying to out me we with got the a big boy. <laughs> so this bottle. All my guests are trying to out me, okay? Um, it's going down quickly though. It, uh, yeah, we've already uh, made a dent, so this should be interesting. Well, thank you for being here. I'm happy. Well, welcome to my home as well. Yeah, I also, I'm in her home, yeah. <laughs> by the way. But I'm so happy to be on the channel. Do you know that I I was trying to count back, like I think the first time we, the first time we met was yes. it on, Silver Lake Boulevard? Or yeah. Was one more Technically okay. VidCon. VidCon. Which I know, I was curious what your memory of that was. And we're talking like 2015. That's, I was gonna say, it's actually been it's like been six minute. years. Yeah. It's, it's funny crazy. when you look back and like count and you're like, wait, I've actually known that person for like five, A six really years. A really long time, yeah. Yeah. You remember when my channel was at like 3,000 subscribers or something like that? From the crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the wine is agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> the wine says yes. Um, yeah, I just remember that you always made uh, travel solo videos. Mm -hmm. At that point back in the mm -hmm. day, you were a part of a, a duo. A duo, I know. As I don't was know if anyone I. remembers, yeah. Um, it was a while ago. That was one of the questions that I wanted to talk about. Yeah. How has it been going from establishing yourself online as a duo yeah. to now you're like doing your own thing? I know. Well, my duo didn't last long. Shout out Tessa if she watches it. She's amazing. Nothing really happened. It was more just. We, at that time when we started the channel, we went to school together, mm -hmm. college, living in the same place. And so, and it was kind of just a shared passion. I don't think either of us was comfortable to start on our own. This is like, again, we're talking like 2015, I think. Yeah. And so it was really lovely to start off with somebody because it gave me like the confidence and the comfortability on camera. And it's just fun to do it with somebody, especially in those early stages. But then she moved, I was moving. And different it was just like paths. going a different path. So like so fun to do it with her but it just was like okay i'm super passionate about this and she had like other things going on and so now it's just me agree yeah no i agree 100 percent. back in the day like nobody even knew if this whole thing would like yeah. stick around no, or I not i didn't know we could make money off of it i never money. thought of it as a career because like, you couldn't back yeah. in the day we like could have could not it was not an option <laughs> But now, True. if anyone ever asks me, like, should I start a channel with somebody? I'm like, probably not because it makes it complicated if you get in deeper too. Like, it's like know, different directions. Yeah, like, yeah. Who, like, whose bank account does the AdSense yeah, go to? Yeah. Just like stuff that you don't really want to be talking about with exactly. your best friend. Yeah. So okay, but now you're off on now your I'm own. On you're own. doing your own thing. Yes. Your channel. Okay, she's one of the first people that I reached out to. It was you and Nathaniel Drew. Yeah. When I launched my French course on this channel. I reached out. It was literally like I had like you up on WhatsApp yeah, and then yeah. you're like on my message. I was like, okay, I need some financial help here. Yes. Who do I go to? Yeah. I went to you. I I'm went to honored. you because Hell you're yeah. one of the only people who talks about this that I know of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. In the space, it's kind of limited. The the YouTube space, I'd say so. Yeah. I'm talking about finance, by the way. Yeah. Like <laughs> What, we're talking money. We're talking money over here. Yes. What got you into the topic? So it, that's a good question. So it kind of started as a pivot. So I'd always been interested in financial education, personal finance, the whole deal. And in the and pre pandemic, I was doing a lot more travel content. I was kind of banking on that for 2020. So in 2020, I was like, hello, I have to pivot as did all creators and everybody honestly with the job. Um, and I went to the dating angle. She went to yeah. the money angle. What's the difference? I know, these days? Honestly, right? <laughs> Try to make some coins. <laughs> so it it kind of spun out of a tip, like couple things. For one, I always enjoyed it. And I think what finally pushed me to talk about it is I'd have conversations with friends and there was a lot of either misinformation or even like embarrassment asking basic questions. So I was like, let me talk about, mm -hmm. yes, like basic financial topics that have been really important to me 
I've always been interested in personal finance and here I am having a conversation with a friend and she's like kind of embarrassed to ask like what's a Roth area or like what's even a stock and I was like oh like it's kind of this language people need to learn and it can very intimidating to learn but once you learn it you're like oh I can do I can do a lot of this on my own like it's not that bad it's actually easier than you expect so I was like I see a market here and also on the in the YouTube space it's all like so many damn white men like it's yelling dudes. in your face about like <laughs> cryptocurrency and I'm like there's no women talking about this, which I think is like definitely a barrier entry to, for some people is they don't, they want to listen to somebody that they can like relate to or kind of how to put themselves in that person's shoes. And I'm like, nobody, I don't see a lot of women doing it out there. And it's something I cared about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. You're some, sorry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's on my squeaky table. <laughs> sorry. Okay. You're somebody yes. who travels as well. Mm -hmm. I'm first off. Like I'm 29 and I didn't even yeah. know what a Roth IRA, IRA right. was until yeah. this year. Which is honestly super 29. normal. But yeah, no, I know. It's unfortunate. And even now when I'm looking back, I, first off, my knowledge mm -hmm. on financial literacy has gone from here to here in the yeah. past like three months. Yes. Like partly because of you, because you're yeah. sending me all these links. And, and it's not that counts. intimidating. And Once then I was you like, start yeah. to tip your toe in, you're like, oh, I can do this. Right. Yeah. I was like, this is actually not that difficult. Um, but where was I going with that? Like, <laughs> this is what happens on Red I know. Talks. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> Like, like not us being this deep already. <laughs> Can you imagine what was, where a train of thought will be after this? It's no thoughts. Okay. You take all the time you need. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I need this like support on my channel. I only started making money in the past few years. Mm -hmm. And so specifically this year with the mm -hmm. French course, I started making good money. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, is this an un unpopular opinion of mine? Mm -hmm. Is this legitimate how I think about this? Okay. Investing in the stock market, sorry, this is gonna get bad. Okay. <laughs> investing in the stock market or having this money to yeah. invest in crypto or buy real estate, you can only start talking about it until you're making like a decent amount of money or? I actually disagree. Okay. I disagree. I think you can do it with anything. I started my Roth IRA when I was 19 making $10 an hour. Oh. And I was not, like most of my life did not make a lot of money because of YouTube, you know, there's good opportunities to yeah. make a bit more and then again, invest more. but. I think kind of the rule of thumb is that it's never too early to start. Most people are like, you should have started tomorrow, even if you're not making a lot. Because there's different ways to invest that basically pay off in the long run. A big part of that is just this like compounding interest. So like your retirement, the better, the earlier you start, the better. Because it's all about time in the market. It's like time in the market beats timing the market. So instead of like waste, waiting until me like, okay, I'm making a lot of money or like, I think I like found some good investment. It's all about just like putting your money in and like letting it ride the wave of the stock market, even if it's not a lot. Cause not a lot over the, you know, a long period of time, 10, 20, 30 years mm -hmm. can grow into a, like a really big amount. But then hold on, I hold know. on. This just becomes like me asking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> what ends up happening? Okay. People always say like time in the market, AKA. Yes. Get in early. Yeah. Okay. For somebody like myself who didn't even really learn about right. this till recently, yeah. you're in your late twenties. I'm sure there are people who are in the thirties, forties. Oh, certainly. Don't yeah, even yeah, know. yeah, absolutely. People say time in the market and then you're like, okay, I'll invest this lump sum. Mm -hmm. So I have time in the market. Right. But then people say, don't invest a lump sum because right. you should be investing like certain money. Yeah. So I'm like, which one do I do? I mean, it's, it's just starting. So what you're talking about is like dollar cost averaging, which is basically yes. putting in, yes, it's putting in your money slowly over time, which is also really easy to automate. Basically anything that you're investing in, you can be like, okay, I just want to put in like $500 a month into that. And like the, whatever platform you're using will like do that work for you. And that's like technically dollar cost averaging. So that way, instead of being like, I'm going to put all this money in now and maybe like the stock market's actually kind of high for that time. And then it dips again. You're like, oh shit, why did I, I put it in done. then? Yeah, I, I could have like slowly, <laughs> you know, lumped it out over time. Mm -hmm. So you could go either approach. It depends if you have like a crap ton of money you're about to put in I'd say like, maybe like, you know, do smaller amounts. But for a lot of people, if you're starting young, like it's not going to be a ton, it's going to be on a smaller amount. Yeah. So it's better to just like slowly start investing. Like, yeah. I was always like, I, I got loans. Mm -hmm. Like I'm trying to travel yep. the world. Yep. Like my mind, I was, feel you. you know, yeah. And that's also why I wanted to talk to you and same with Nathaniel Drew. Like these are people yeah. that I would take financial advice from because I know that you're not financial advisors. Yeah, nope. Mm -hmm. we, if we could add that <laughs> disclaimer. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, I'm a business know. student. I'm only 24. <laughs> um, but why I like taking advice from mm -hmm. these certain personalities on YouTube was because 
uh, you guys see like the free spirited travel. Mm -hmm. Like I want to just travel the world yeah. and maybe stay in hostels, go on yeah. the pub crawl, mm -hmm. see the sunrise. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. <laughs> but you're also like, well, let me make some money. Yes. So I remember when I texted you though, I was yeah. kind of like, what is the point? What's the point of it all? Yeah, I was just like, what is the point no, of money? Period. Fair. Yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> open -ended screw capitalism. <laughs> so, such an open-ended question, but... <laughs> no, I feel you. I forget what my exact question was, but yeah. it was something like, what is the point of putting all this money in mm -hmm. to have a, like, bang-in retirement fund when, mm -hmm. when we're 65, taking it out, we're not even going to have the energy to go run around the world, which is totally. what I want to use the money yes, for. Yes, I'm on the same page with you on that, where I'm like... Okay. The way I see it is if you don't control your money, your money controls you. So if you're not actively taking control of your finances, of your savings, you're going to live in a deficit and it's going to constantly be a stressor on your life. Like that's the beauty of money is that it gives you, it, it, you know, and managing it well, it gives you the power to decide your future, to decide if you want to travel, to decide, you know, if you want to have kids, setting them up for a good future, if you want to yeah. buy a home down the road, whatever it is. So it's less about being like, let me save until I'm 65 and then go like, you know, the whole like grind Party until you're 60 and then like you go on some group tours when you're like a grandma, like, oh, hell no, I want to spend my money now, I but I want to set myself up for financial success so I can always be independent and yeah. like always be, you know, not have to rely on anybody and like have set my own self up for success. There's like, the, have you seen the share interview? No. Well, there's this interview saying? where like somebody asked her, it was something where she was talking about where her mom was like, oh honey, why don't you just like, you know, try to find like a rich man to marry. And Cher's like, mom, I am the rich man. Ooh. My mom said to me, you know, sweetheart, one day you should settle down and marry a rich man. And I said, mom, I am a rich man. Ooh. And that's like my life motto. I'm like, I'm gonna be the rich man. I'm the so rich man. I'm all about, Ooh, you know, I've done the that. whole hostel travel, like only being able to afford a baguette for lunch, like a two euro piece of bread, <laughs> which is lovely. So I'm like, yeah. I know that side of things, but also now I'm like, okay, it's up to me to like take control of this. Now you can get and, the like, cheese baguette. It, yeah. you it's a level up. <laughs> or get your friend the cheese baguette. Exactly. Yeah, it's nice, it's yeah. nice. Have you ever wanted, like as, again, as a traveler, mm -hmm. have you ever seen yourself with like a standalone home and a white picket fence? Or, oh, like, hell no. Or well, like a camper van or like, what Maybe you, a camper van would be What fun. are you saving for? I, oh, that's a good question. Right now it's, yeah, it's for that continual financial freedom where I'm like, I want to have enough money in my bank account where I'm like, if I, which again, it's a privileged thing. Like I'm only supporting myself, but if I want to like go dip to Europe, for a bit, like I can afford that. And yeah. that's like within my budget or, you know, maybe down the road, I do want to buy a home, not necessarily to live in it for 10 years, but to have it as an investment. Okay. Um, or if I want to go back to grad school, like I'm not going to have to pay for it. And like, I don't want loans or what debt. What would you study? Journalism. Oh, I cool. think journalism with like an emphasis in like documentary filmmaking. We'll see. That makes a lot of sense. Right? I mean, it, it fits like, the Have job. you ever seen her channel? <laughs> I mean, same. Netherlands, yeah. what up? So. I, say, I say that I would like to, I mean, the thing for me, I don't need to go back to school like, yeah. per se. I know, I know, I feel you. Like, I don't know, I would love to go to a class. We were just right. talking. She was like, maybe I want to take another class yeah. somewhere. And I'm like, I understand, like, I would want to be in person. Like, mm -hmm. I, I like being in a classroom at a table. Same. With other people, you learn better, you learn quicker. I love that. Yeah. But I don't need the, like, certificate, I guess, or the degree. I know, I feel you in that. I definitely go back and forth, especially because, like, grad school in the States is so expensive. You said something mm -hmm. in an interview you did with uh, the financial guy, right, Graham. Graham. Love Graham. Graham, he's cool, yeah, and he's like clearly thriving over yeah. there in the financial field. <laughs> he's he clearly doing his thing. Yes. You said something in the interview though that I loved, which was um, you don't know what you're going to do in the next five You said something like mm -hmm. you're kind of banking your money or something like this mm -hmm. because you, you don't know how long this is going to last. Yes. It was something Thanks. like that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's spot on. I think I was talking about where I'm like, this career we're in, it doesn't have the longevity of a traditional career. It's yeah. so like the amount of money I'm making now, I want it to last me for a long time because I'm not going to be making this much money for decades to come. Wait, but and just, why don't you think that? I don't know. I think part of it is, okay, I don't know. YouTube is so... It's volatile. such, it's so volatile. I've seen creators, so like I grew up watching YouTube. I loved YouTube in high school. I've seen some creators that I absolutely were like stars at the time and their channels have, a lot of them have fizzled out or they yeah. haven't changed with the times and like, they're no longer relevant. And I'm like, yeah. I know that'll probably be me one day. Like, that's just how life works. Like it, it's fine. It is what it is. I come out of peace with it. So I'm like, let myself, my, let me set myself up for, you know, success or, you know, security in the long run because I know, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to be realistic. It's not going to last forever. It's an incredible place to be, but I'm like, 
I get I mean, it. I it might. You never I know. Totally YouTube get it. is just, it's continually growing, but I'm not gonna put my eggs in one basket. Yeah, it's interesting to look at even, again, back in the day, the, the main goal, mm -hmm. people were like, let me get the show. Let yeah. me be a reporter, let me be a documentary right. journalist. Whatever it is, yeah. Now it's like, if you look at people who are like making it, they're all, like, it seems like they're starting on social media. Yes. And like, when I look, I, first I off, I have like 10 nieces and nephews. Yeah. All under 10. The only people that they can even name are the people on TikTok. Oh, that's interesting. Or YouTube. They oh don't know TikTok anybody though? else. Do you, are you on TikTok? I've started. Okay. I've dabbled. Oh. I've dabbled. I'm Why? curious what thoughts on TikTok. TikTok just makes me anxious. <laughs> It's I very agree. entertaining as a platform, but as a creator, it makes me anxious. Because I, it just makes me feel like when I open my app, I'm like, oh my god, why am I not utilizing this? But I don't feel drawn to short form content, but it's taking over the world. Instagram reels, YouTube shorts, TikTok videos. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like I need to jump on the bandwagon, but I'm like, I don't really want to. Well, I started posting. You know? I started posting on yeah, TikTok. Yeah, I dabbled as well. Follow us. Follow, <laughs> please. This is just a plug. <laughs> Um, no, I've, I've dabbled in it, but I agree yeah. with you. I'm more of the like, I want to go make a long story. Yes, I want to speak exactly. more than a minute. Exactly. You can like properly story tell. Yeah. And, and I think it's like, people, it's like, it's just punchy or like aesthetic and like, that's it. This should prove everything to us right now. Mm -hmm. The fact that we prefer long form content True. than TikTok yeah. means that there are other people out there who also exactly. prefer it. Agreed. So, okay. I feel better. So let's stick to the yeah. one hour videos. <laughs> Like, subscribe. <laughs> I don't know how to frame this question, but it's just going to come out. That sounds like it's going to be intense. It's not. No. Like, it's not. I just don't know how to frame it because for some yes. reason there's a lot of wine in this cup. I read something once. I just want to hear your thoughts about, mm -hmm. about it, on it. Uh -huh. Jesus, like, so... <laughs> You're crushing it. <laughs> this is better than when I tried to film a lot, so I'm impressed. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. um, I read something the other day that said people follow influencers for their personality. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, like your, the longevity of your career depends on, I guess, how well people still vibe with your personality. True. At the, end of the, day. Uh -huh. the way that influencers start going wrong is when they start opening businesses and mm -hmm. try to get their following to follow their business. Oh, interesting. And the article said something like. People don't want to follow businesses, they want to follow personalities. Hmm. So the minute you try to like channel your, right. your influencer thing into a business. Like girl boss. Yeah, like people just start losing interest. Interesting. I don't I know if you have any thoughts about that. No, I could see that. Especially if you're like, I, I know I, I personally am always trying to find the balance of like sponsored content versus non-sponsored content. Obviously, I'm sure with yourself as well, it's like, okay, I'm only choosing brands that I am excited and stoked on. Yeah. But now that we're further along, I'm like, oh, there's more opportunities because we've built a bit of a bigger platform. But I'm like, okay, I don't wanna make sure it just feels like I'm selling people something. Like I want it to be about genuine connection or storytelling or whatever the case well, is. Well, I just meant an actual business. Like a literal business. <laughs> you start a wine company. True, well, and you I don't have any plans to do that. So we're, <laughs> I know, so we're good, longevity is gonna be here. <laughs> we're set. No, I feel you on that though. Cause some people yeah. maybe do start it with that in mind too which isn't necessarily like the best way to start. I don't know, but yeah, it's a, I feel like a lot of it's about the personality, which will be interesting to see too, for people who maybe just do Instagram or just do TikTok where it's like yeah. limited, like what does that look like longevity wise? Like maybe just YouTube as a platform and YouTube, you know, primary creators that are biggest on YouTube as opposed to other platforms. Mm -hmm. There's more longevity there than other platforms perhaps. Yeah, I don't know. We'll Cause it see. is more personality. I'm like the people on YouTube know a lot more about my life than if I just was to post photos and captions. Cause I'm like, I got long vlogs of me rambling and like traveling and <laughs> all the things. So I don't know. We're going to pivot from YouTube to this. Mm -hmm. You were born in Paris. I was. Ah, what? <laughs> like what a power move. It's like on your passport, born in Paris. It is, yeah. Done. It's funny. Whenever what? I like, we'll go through whatever the equivalent of TSA is there. They see it and they're like, uh, like Paris, but it's American passport. And they're like, what? Like how? Yeah, I know. And I'm like, I don't really speak French either. I'm a failure, but <laughs> it's fine. So you were born there. Yes. And why? So I live there. My parents were like Americans working abroad, essentially. They lived there for cool. seven years. My older brother was born there. I was born there. I lived there until I was about four and a half. I don't get citizenship because my parents were American citizens. Very unfortunate. It's either like they had to be American citizens and I lived there until like eight or 10 or something like that. I was only there until four. My brother was there pretty much at seven. Um, and so then moved on back, but have always felt a drawback to the motherland. Like, I can't imagine. Like, I geez, know, my like, first <laughs> developmental years. It's like, 
and check where I'm, I'm like, born. I know. Check that home. My mom always jokes because I, I love bread. I mean, who doesn't? But when I was like a baby, she'd just like plop me in the little grocery cart in the French, you know, yeah. grocery store, supermarkets, and just give me a baguette to like keep me quiet. And I'm like still just as obsessed. I'm like, that stuff sticks with you throughout the years. It doesn't go away. Yo, and your parents, like again, I <laughs> you're always posting about your parents. I know, I, I love like, them. It's like the best yeah. parental child relationship. Yeah, yeah. It's like the ideal parent situation. Like They're pretty great. What did they do to I don't know. How did they do this? They did something right. And both my my siblings are more way more kick ass than I am. They're both incredible people so they did something right at least for my brother and sister i don't know about me we'll see um, <laughs> what do you mean years. of course you did you have a thriving youtube but channel they're and great following. i think they also too they gave us a very like open mindset like growing up we always had international people throughout the house like they'd host international students so they had like colleagues from around the world so it was like a very like like a global upbringing where there was always introduced to people from like all over and i think I that like that. it was lovely and they're very house my mom's iranian so that's just a, a huge part of iranian culture is hospitality so we always had people in and out so there's always people to like learn from or pay attention to and i think like you know opened our world view from a very early age of like what's out there as mm -hmm. well as like how to treat other people and i think it like you know so valued important. education and all that type of stuff and yeah. and now like but you grew up in southern california yes primarily in in southern california which like i don't blame them for like wanting to like, i know live they're like let me go back <laughs> it's beautiful yeah it's gorgeous i always say like southern california okay below la mm -hmm. that's like the probably the most beautiful place to like start it's a like family. paradise yeah it's really lovely it's gorgeous but it's also very sleepy beach culture oh, versus like new york yeah. so it wasn't the vibe for me that's why i was like gotta go like okay it's friday night you're yeah. a teenager in your high school oh i was straight edge in high school so was i like, you were i know to that. oh yeah <laughs> yeah i was not doing I know. anything no me neither i was lame i just stayed i was like also honor student i was like let me get the best grades oh so just a little me studying away on a friday night it was until i got to college where i was like okay i know i'm like let's try to have some fun it's all those like socal neighborhood names though it's like I know. laguna yeah. dreams paradise isle like what <laughs> what you're not wrong you're it's not wrong. so nice over there okay so it's interesting though there's definitely like a big mix like there's extreme wealth and then there's like middle class and lower class like all bundled together which is like new york all bundled True. together in a little area but overall it's like the access i think to the coast just really like opens up to like you to a whole co certain culture and way of life that's like very lovely yeah, true. It's like here in New York, the great equalizer mm -hmm. is like the subway. Way more you so, gotta, absolutely, yeah. You gotta take that subway and you just see all kinds of Yeah, It doesn't exactly. matter how much money you got in the bank account, yeah. you're taking the subway. Yes. But also, like, I guess in a different way, the beach, mm -hmm. like, no matter how much money you have, you can still yeah. go to the beach and mm -hmm. all have the more or less the same totally. experience. Yeah, it's like the closer to the beach, like, the wealthier, you know, there's greater wealth and then you start to trickle out and it kind of, like, decreases you know so it's like you're all kind of like bundled together in this area but yeah it's not like new york i love new york for that reason it's like you get on the mm -hmm. subway and you're literally interacting or like close to every like social class or like way of life and like mm -hmm. a really great way where it is true in like orange county or la like you can be in your fancy car and like choose not to interact with anyone if you don't want to i know and or again it's like yet again the importance of travel because uh growing up in indiana where mm -hmm. it's just cornfields like there's yeah. one, there's like yeah. one type of person who yeah. lives there you know like it's more or less we all have the same culture right we're playing cornhole yeah. like the barbecue and it's fun you know like it's a lot Love of fun it. but since we're all one type it's like you just grow up with a different even political mm -hmm. ideology and again here you wouldn't even it's like two completely yeah. different universes yeah and so it's hard like even when like the election or any political thing is happening i'm like i see exactly what both sides are trying to say and they're like, healthy because i feel like some people healthy. exist in their own echo chambers where they like literally refuse to listen to the other person and i'm like yeah. i'm strong in my own beliefs but i'll never be able to change someone's mind if i can't kind of understand where they're coming from i'll never be able to have like a meaningful conversation if i don't like take a second to be like i do not agree with you at all but let me at least understand yeah. why you're thinking that way so there's value there but I feel that too. Orange County is that way too. It's very kind of stuck in its ways. Right. Um, okay. Well, anyways, back yes. to your parents. Back to the parents. Let's talk about the parents. Not politics. <laughs> back to the parents. So uh -huh. you posted something on your Instagram. It was a photo, and you're just like, I really appreciate my my family, my, my parents as I get older. And I was like, like having an emo moment. <laughs> I love it though. It's it's important. Yes. It's like first off, I didn't even know that emo actually is emotional. Did you know that? I didn't either. Well, emo. Did is that I? Yeah. I think that's what that means. It must be, yeah. 
So Do I have another or am I just making that no, up? No, I'm here I don't for know. it. It sounds right. I'm here for it. But I like that you say that. Yeah. I agree. I feel like as you get mm -hmm. older, you start seeing your parents more as actual like adults. Humans. Yes. Humans. Like a peer to have a real conversation with beyond like, I don't know. Instead of like your savior who can like, I don't know. Right. Or they like do your you. laundry and like make you a grilled cheese. It's like, oh no, you're like, yeah. Like, human. okay. First off, my parents were born yeah. on the same day. <gasps> no way. Very, I always say like, like same year too? One year apart, okay, but like but still you, twins. Can you imagine you're at the bar and you're like, what's your birthday? Yeah. And you're like May 27th. You're like, how'd you know my birthday? Yeah. Like are we destined? <laughs> and then it just starts off magical. Yeah. They got divorced, but it's <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So maybe don't fall for the person with the same birthday. So May 27th, mm -hmm. their birthday just happened. And I was like, oh, yeah. dad, I want to get you a massage. I want right. to book you a massage. And it's almost like he sees me as a friend now because he's like, I don't need a massage. If I need a massage, I'll pay for it myself. Right. Like, you don't need to get it for me, son. Right. You're like, but it's. I'm like, but I want to treat you. And it's, it's kind of like, I don't know. I feel like he sees me almost it's as like, like more of a peer. I'm literally 29, don't turn yeah. 30. Like, I'm not a kid anymore. Yeah. So it's almost like we don't have to. We don't have to have that relationship anymore. True. But it also leads to such deeper, more meaningful like conversations, I think, because you're like, oh, this is someone I can like fully address as a peer rather than like having to have it all together or like having to censor myself or whatever the case is. I think it just leads to like more depth. And you're like, also me as a teenager, I'm like, whatever, like, I don't want to listen to it. But now yeah. as an adult, I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys have so much wisdom. Like, please tell me. Like, I actually really appreciate it now and I like see what you've done for me or the things you know that maybe Back in the day, I just took for granted. It's just like, oh, those are my parents. But now I'm like, whoa, like you guys are really cool. Yeah. There were some instances, I'm curious how your family mm -hmm. is, but there were some instances for me where again, in the past few years, I've been really like introspective. And even through yeah. this series, like I've been talking to everybody through right. wine, you know, like yeah. you just start talking about all kinds Listen, of things. Yeah. And so when I would go back to Indiana and maybe ask like my grandma or my grandpa, yeah. like, so what was your, what were your thirties like? What mm -hmm. were your twenties like? You know, they would just kind of, Treat it as like, oh, I don't know. It yeah. was fun. Right. And I'm like, no, tell me tell about the, the time. details. You got your heart broken or right. you, you fell in love. Right. Crazy adventure, whatever it is. Because I want to hear that. I know but, I uh, need that. <laughs> I don't know. Also, then I see like, okay, you're you're in Indiana. Like people don't talk about this. So actually right. you probably don't know how to talk about this True. either. People are less likely to like air their dirty laundry or like talk about things yeah. that are a little Are you able to tense. air your dirty laundry? I feel like I'm gonna air my dirty laundry. To yeah. a certain extent. I think I could. Too. Right? I feel like I came with friends. I feel like I've had to find a balance with the internet where I'm like, you know, privacy versus like sharing. I love to share to a level of vulnerability, but it's like also you gotta find like your line of like, okay, I need to deal with this shit on my yeah. own. But in general, yeah. Like, which I need love. to know when yeah. I have to go to the clinic or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm like, y'all don't need to know. <laughs> like, every detail. Like, love you guys. But like, you know, balance is great. But I feel like with friends, and I feel like that's like a shift in our cultures, people are so much more willing to talk about the taboo. Like, people talk about how much money they make, or they'll like yeah. talk like about their date in a way that people might not have 10, 20 years ago. Or maybe not. Maybe it's more so the culture of like where you're at. Like, Indiana versus New York. Maybe people in New York in the 80s were talking about everything. True. But in Indiana in the 80s, they're like, Hmm? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Who knows? Okay, I graduated in high school in 2010. Mm -hmm. So I was there 20, 20, 2006 to 2010. There was no social media, and it's just crazy to think back like, what was I even doing? How did Honestly, I spend same. my time? I was 2014, and I had Facebook. But I didn't even have Instagram until I graduated, really. Yeah, like, what like, did I, had it, I thought it was a photo editing app. I was like, oh, Instagram, you just like edit your photos with Instagram. Yeah. Like, you put a little filter if you want to like put it to Facebook, just edit it on Instagram. And Facebook. it wasn't I anything know. that we needed. Like, like we were. I know. Nobody so needed that. <laughs> it wasn't like one day there'll be Instagram and right? I need it. Right. Like, I know. It was great. I did have Facebook though. So Facebook at the time, it's like you kind of got the FOMO or you got the comparison, but only with your classmates. There was no like, Oh my god, I need to be like that beautiful girl yeah. I saw on Instagram who's living that great life in that other city. It was more of like, okay, I'm comparing myself to my classmates. I'm like, what do you guys do on the weekend? Like, you're gonna post about on your little Facebook album? But it wasn't like I have to compare myself to like everyone, literally mm -hmm. anywhere and everywhere. Which a little prayer, a little <laughs> love to all you out there that I've had to deal with that since you were True. teenagers. Like, but I don't even know how I feel. It could be a blessing too. It could be a blessing because you're just as like likely to be inspired from people all over the world that you wouldn't have exposure to. So there's 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 the pros and cons. Yeah, with anything. There was also something I read or heard that was like every generation. Yeah. There's a new technology that you have to get used to. So for us, True. it's all internet. It's the internet social and social media. media the, the generation deal. before, mm -hmm. where everyone was like, that's gonna ruin the society. Right. It was like television. Yeah or radio or it was something like that.
the year before. It was like radio, yeah, yeah. TV, TV uh, computers. Right, computers, social media. Then computers, it's social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And each Certainly. generation was like, they're going to ruin right. the Right, people whole were saying world. the same thing about radios back in the day, where it's yeah. like, okay, what? We don't even propose to radios unless we're in like a car. And then the counter Cause argument cause is just... no, society will like learn how to do it. And exactly, move on. and evolve, yeah. Like, what'll be the next thing? How could you even. <laughs> I'm scared. It's going to be like AI or like VR, like virtual True. reality. That's what I'm scared of. Okay. VR is scary, is it not? It is scary, yeah. It's scary, but, again, me, a Libra, trying to see both sides of things. I love it. I'm like, okay, obviously it's scary. We don't want to all live in this virtual world. Right. But. There's value. What if that world is actually more fun? Like, what if I can just jetpack out of here and then go to the safari in one second? You mean and... via your little headset? Maybe, but what if that's more, I know it's not real. But do you want to experience life that way? But how do we know that? It's all a simulation. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a Truman Show. Like, how do we actually know I'm not this? real. Is it? Like, oh my God. We can't do this when we're drunk. It's too much. <laughs> what do you think about VR? I think VR has a lot of potential. It scares me. I'll use an example. Going back to my siblings that are more badass than me. My brother, who he's super cool, graduated college, moved to the Middle East for three years, and he saw this need oh. for a more immersive style of language learning again link we got this language learning theme in yep. the family i'm trying Love to get that. there so he created this company essentially that over oh, many years because it's not easy to start a company from scratch but he basically started this company where it's all about learning vr or learning languages through vr and it's all about having the immersive experience so think about it you know everyone's like oh if you want to learn a language you have to immerse yourself in the culture but if you're like i don't have the opportunity to go live in japan for three months instead you can put on a headset and all of a sudden you're in japan and you're talking to people at a japanese Whoa. cafe a japanese you know clothing store a japanese business office and like it immerses you with a tutor in that language in order to have that experience where you're like, oh, I'm actually here. And I'm like having to like live it out. That makes sense. So like things like that, I think there's like potential for it to be super beneficial, but it is also terrifying me. <laughs> yeah, because then I mean, again, it's like, how far do you take it? Do you, right. what if that's one excuse? Like, let me go learn Japan in Japan. Right. Let me go Japan. learn Japanese in Japan. Yeah. But then also like, I'm in New York, but I want to go surfing. Like, let me go surfing True. in Laguna or yeah. whatever. I think the problem is when people find it to be greater than their own reality yeah. and decide that's a better reality for them. And again, not everyone has the opportunity to go travel the world or like live in New York City, whatever the case is. Like some people are like, I'm stuck here. This is the life I'm living at the moment. Maybe it's better, but no. I think honestly that's when it scares me. Is when, vir when virtual reality is better than your actual reality is when I'm like, oof. I'm, t oof. I'm telling you, it's almost like we're on our way there with Instagram. You know, like we do. True. I mean, the highlight reel. Let me just yeah. stop us all right now. Like we are making our living on the virtual world. Okay, That's this a is a really good point. This is a real life moment. I'm here, you're here. Yeah, but to them it's virtual. To them it's virtual, but to us it's virtual too because we're gonna be posting it. Be posting it. So True. we are. But look at the, like we are spending our real life yeah. for the virtual world. It's but true. it's the virtual world that allows us to live, life live, that live. Life that we want. So I was like, <laughs> can't keep doing these. We're in the matrix. <laughs> I can't keep doing this. <laughs> I know this is the beginning. Uh, the final consensus is we don't know how we feel. <laughs> this is this is just how it is. But actually, in the matrix, there was a scene where he goes, um, okay, so every night I yeah. forget what the actual word. I forget what the actual sentence that he uses, but he's like, every night we go to sleep mm -hmm. and we envision a new world, aka a dream. Mm -hmm. And then you wake up and you're True. like, oh, it's just a dream. But when you're in the dream, you don't know that you're in the dream. Yeah. So how do we know that this isn't all one long dream okay. where we have, we don't. It could be a simulation. I know, I don't we know. We never know. I hope it's not. It feels pretty real. <laughs> I know. My dreams never feel super real. I talk to people that have like very intense, real feeling dreams. Mine? I don't know, maybe I just am not a... It's melatonin. It's, it's true. Honestly, I kept a dream journal for a while for my AP Psych class way back in the day. Ooh. And my dreams felt more real the more I like kept track of them. These days they feel a bit vague, so maybe that's why, but... Were you trying to lucid dream? I wasn't trying to fully lucid dream, but we were kind of like testing dreaming in general to kind of see like what came up and like what different type of dreams you have and like whether they're like meaningful or they're just totally like absurd random dreams. like. I had a phase where I was trying to learn how to lucid dream because mm -hmm. I've had, I think I've had two in my life. Yeah. And it was so interesting. You're like, Whoa, were you able I to? Can... Yeah, I've done yeah. it twice. No way. Where it's like, oh my God, I can like 
fly, okay, yeah. and then you start flying. No, I need to. It was my really cool. But then I'm like, that's what virtual reality is. True. Okay. I know. Oh my Basically, god. I'm like, I don't know. Virtual reality is just lucid dreaming. Basically, but then okay, so lucid dreaming though. So I had a phase where I was doing that, and I was like tracking my mm -hmm. journals to see if there were yeah. any like uh, patterns. Yeah. They also say like look at your hands and then when you're dreaming mm. maybe you'll remember to look mm -hmm. at your hands and then you'll remember like oh yeah this it's was my sign yeah um but it was interesting like okay at the end of my like journaling sessions after like two weeks of doing this i was like i don't think i want to do this because this would I mean know, like i'm intense. never able to actually fall asleep mm. that's like a good you'll point yeah. always be awake yeah like I'm awake right now and totally. I'm awake in my sleep. Like, can I ever just go to sleep? Exactly. <laughs> I know. We just turn the lights off and like that's <laughs> just that. Like, this is too much thinking. There's a Netflix show. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's one that's kind of essentially, it's like this thriller and it's all about these characters that essentially like are lucid dreaming. You gotta check it out. It's uh, twisted though. Yes, Last I know it. I've you know watched what I'm it. About? It's like eyes on you or something. I could be I've that. watched this and it's twisted. It's twisted. Uh, it's very Black Mirror-esque. By the end, I was like, I forget shit. what it's called. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of virtual yes. reality and like new technologies, uh -huh. uh, going back to financial stuff, crypto. What's up? Ooh, what's crypto? up, with crypto? I know. What's good? I'm like Dogecoin, Bitcoin. What are we talking about? Safe Moon. Um, Safe Wood. Safe Moon. It's another one. I Ethereum. There's a lot out there. I personally view crypto as kind of gambling so gambling you can make a lot you could get really lucky and strike it rich but you could also lose literally everything you've invested and that's a risk you have to take that's investing in general but crypto is especially volatile where it's like it could pop off hello bitcoin hello dogecoin back in the day and then elon musk texts or what was it tweets. elon musk tweets about bitcoin dogecoin the whole deal and all of a sudden it drops and there you go there's whatever however much money you invested it's gone yeah so in my mind, cryptocurrency is essentially gambling. If you choose to jail, if you choose to get into that, you know, it's your risk. It's a risk that a big risk that you're taking. It's a very high risk investment. There is a potential to make money, but I just feel like it's the stuff. future. That's one that I'm like. I mean, it could be. It could be something you buy and hold for years, and all of a sudden, Bitcoin keeps growing, Dogecoin keeps growing, whatever the case is but it's risky it's very uh, it's a very high risk investment it's one that i did put some money into just Which like one? Some. Bit or i did bitcoin? bit in ethereum just because okay. i like the name again yeah, like not the reason to be doing this <laughs> this is okay let me start me here. with dogecoin i didn't put a few hundred dollars in dogecoin i was like you know what i'm here for the meme me the, I read, okay myself. i read this book called how to worry less about money mm. and they had different it was by the school of life yeah. i talk about this company all the time the school of life love them yeah and uh, there was, there were like certain scenarios like, Jared is from Indiana. Right. I was like, this is like, me. Oh, I'm Jared. <laughs> Basically they broke down different scenarios and yeah. you would relate to one, like how mm -hmm. you view money. And I realized that the way that I view money is magical. Okay. Like I work hard and right. there's no money. I work hard and there is money. Like yeah. my effort Mm -hmm. doesn't determine where the money comes from. Like I just, okay. I'm always working hard. Right. Like, yes. Sometimes I I'm exhausted. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I'm like, I didn't do anything for that. So it's, I have a magical relationship with oh, money. This is interesting. I like this. So even it goes down to, again, this is me like self, uh, analyzing mm -hmm. whatever I, when I was paying off my loans for college, it was a matter of, I deferred them for two years. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, I ain't got the money. I just right. don't. Smart. And then yeah. I paid them off in two, like yeah. two payments. Yeah. Cause oh, YouTube just works that way. Or any creative you industry. You right. have no money. You never know. Then all of a sudden you do. It could blow up, yeah. And that's kind of, I don't know. I don't know how I was going to relate that back to crypto. Oh, but yeah. But I think everyone too has a different mindset to money and it's different to like, it's important to kind of address what it is. Like yeah. I personally always had like an extremely like a frugality mindset around money. I think it's dependent on the way you grew up, the way you were, you know, exposed to money. If you didn't grow up with a lot, you probably have more of a frugal mindset. And it, 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 even since I was like 15, I was a saver. Cause I'm like, I don't know where my, you know, I don't know where money's coming from. It may not be there. Let me save while I have the opportunity to do it. Like if I'm a babysitter, if I, you know, yeah. I worked a million jobs at restaurants and retails, the whole deal. And that's carried into my adulthood. Now that I'm making a significant sum of money, my boyfriend is like, you can afford the extra guac on the Chipotle bowl. I'm like, are you I sure? Like, I'm like, no. I'm like, no. Are you paying for it? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, like I'll buy the lens that's hundreds of dollars that I need because I'm like, okay, it's for my business. So it's like your mindset to money is to, towards money is always shifting. But I do think it's important to kind of like take a second and analyze 
how you view money. Is it just, is it something that's magical? When it's there, it's great and I'll have fun with it. When it's not there, I'm like, I'll figure it out later. Or is it something mm. where you're like, I need to save this for the future? Because then once you kind of address that, I think you can have a better idea of like, okay, how do I want to like move forward with this into my own, you know, the years to come. But then this is yeah. where it also gets like a little <laughs> tricky. Why yes. am I okay spending a thousand dollars in crypto, mm -hmm. but I'm not okay spending a thousand dollars on myself for a new microphone? Well, when it's like this would be guaranteed. Agreed. That is like who knows. I know. So okay, it's just maybe silly. put a thousand dollars in index funds instead of crypto. I already got yeah, we got, got we're, 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 we're going over here. I got that. I got that over there. Okay, good. We voice memoed <laughs> about this too. <laughs> Literally, the day but you told me to do yeah. that, I was like. Yeah. Get your index ones, kids. And Roth IRA, please. Yes. Um, okay, I did do both of those, uh, by the way. Yes, that's what I, I like know, to hear. Yes. Even though we've been talking about finance so much, I just kind of dived into that the last eight months. So before, and also alongside talking about finance, also a big travel vlog gal, New York City lifestyle gal, sustainable These fashion lanes. gal. These are all of her lanes. Everybody, every creator needs their bucket. So finance is newer. It's not newer to me personally. It's newer to me on the internet, if you enjoy that. But I also make lots of vlogs, travel content, sustainable fashion content, apartment tours, the whole deal. It's all on there. So. And you have a course. And I have a course. I have a course on Bright Trip. <laughs> if you course. want to learn how to vlog, even though we haven't talked about vlogging at all, I've made vlogs for like five years now. Traveling in New York City, in California, the whole deal. So if you're ever curious about how to make a vlog, either for the internet or just for yourself about how to capture memories, there's the description course. box below. And again, that's the Link whole reason below. why I wanted to have her here. That's the whole reason why I, she was the first person I, one of the first people that I texted because I was like, you've traveled the world, you know the whole free spirited thing, but you actually speak about finance in a way that people can understand. So check those videos out, check the description box below. Um, yeah, you have all these different lanes. Yes. I had this joke, it's not, it's like not gonna work out because I'm like drunk now, but it was something like, you have you have Hit all me. these lanes, yes. but you're like your actual name is not pronounced Elena. Uh, oh, it's Elen. Wait, that's funny. I, give I you know. That. Sorry, so I was. Wait. Like, I know. It was <laughs> I'm here for it. Like my name's Elena, but stay in your lane, or so, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> I wish it said it's Elena. It's so it's Elena. Yeah, it rhymes with McKenna. For anyone curious out there. Okay, I, I guess McKenna. it helps a lot. Everyone, my own grandpa called me Elena until I was four years old. Elena. My own parents were like, "No, that's not it." <laughs> um, I mean, I get it. People call me Damien or right. Dominic. I get Elena Taber. It's Elena Taber. Elena and I Taber. have an Iranian middle name, so nobody can pronounce that. What is it? Setare. Does that mean something? It means star. Beautiful. Wait, what are your buckets before we leave? What are your lanes? Always oh, travel. Um, it's always travel. How are you feeling in 2021? Recently, I started getting getting into dating because I feel like no one really talks about it, and I'm somebody we need who's more of it. pretty open with it. I'm fine talking mm -hmm. about dating, um, just about my whole romantic life. True. I'm, it's honestly the most fun subject. To talk about. I just feel like the truth will set you free, yeah. and I'm not trying I'm to have any it. secrets anymore. You no, know what? I, if yeah. I'm gonna tell you after the camera turns off about right. my dating story, yeah. like I'm fine telling it here. Right. So. Thank you for watching thus far. If, that if you're even here, I was that, like, at the very end, I'm just like, like who's watching? It. I don't know. You never know. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Yes, so happy um, to be here. Check the description box below and uh, see you next time. Ching ching. A ching. Thank <laughs> you. Oh my god. It was Why is this me? Anytime I try to film. Oh my god. Oh, it wasn't place. even on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> With that being said, fill it up! <laughs> I know. Look at this bottle slowly dwindling. Ugh. Oh, uh, oh. In focus. crypto. Can you see? It looks I can't, focus. okay. No, it looks in focus. I think. Double check. Yeah, it is. It okay. Is. <laughs> My eyes. Like, like, that's what I should invest in LASIK. Honestly? This is what I was gonna say. Oh, oh. LASIK, no. 